before the video starts, I just want to say that I messed up in the video. I say 500 megabytes when referring to the PlayStation 4 hard drive, the original one, when it's 500 gigs. I know that I misspoke. So before people start typing, I just want to throw that out there, okay? Here you go. What's up, people? Salt me fly doing something different today. I'm upgrading my PS4 hard drive from the 500 megabyte because the shit is full to 4 terabytes. Now I'm doing that is I got a 4 terabyte hard drive, the Seagate, it's a SSHD, 4 terabyte, 3.5. You know, that doesn't fit, so you need the Nyko data bank. Oh, yeah, we got it now. I've been watching a lot of videos about this. The whole process seems pretty easy, but the main question that people are always asking in the comment sections that nobody seems to do in their videos is formatting. Now, it took me a while to kind of figure this out, and I'm hoping this works. I'm hoping it works, and I seen one video where a guy said that he didn't format the actual hard drive. What he did was he formatted this USB stick that has the PS4 update when you have to reinitialize the PS4. He formatted this to XFAT and it worked. So we'll see if it works. I'm hoping it works because I have no clue how to plug this thing into my computer to be able to format. So if you're wondering how to format this, it's really easy. You just put this in your computer, you open it up, and you right click on it and it says format. You click on format and you pick which one you want. Everybody says it's XFAT, you click on XFAT, it formats it, it deletes everything on it. So make sure if you have anything on here, you transfer it over to your computer, all that stuff like that, so you don't lose what's on the USB drive. So I'm hoping this all works. So I'm gonna open this stuff up. I haven't opened it yet, I haven't even looked at it. We're gonna check it out and see how it is. All right, so here, so what comes with it is this little screwdriver right here. You get an extra screw depending on what series PlayStation you have. Some of them, I guess, will just, you have to open up this little tab. You have to open up this little tab right here. And then that way you can mount this inside of your PlayStation. I guess some of them, you can just mount them right here in the front, this little hole. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. You just mount it right there like that. So we'll see when we get in there what it is. This right here actually replaces your small 2.5 hard drive that's in your PlayStation right now. And it's an adapter piece it actually hooks on in the front right here to the front of the data bank in there. So let's open the PlayStation up and we'll see how this works. Fingers crossed, I'm not techie at all, so we'll see. Here we go. So how this works is this side right here, the shiny side of your PlayStation 4, you just grab it and you're supposed to pull it towards you and it's supposed to unclick. <laughs> it's just never that simple. Here we go. Oh. It was very simple. That thing just came off like it was nothing. If this doesn't work, at least I cleaned my PlayStation because this was dusty. Super dusty. All right. So. We got one screw right here. This is the front of the PlayStation. There's one screw right here that you undo with the attached little Phillips head that you got. Don't lose your screws. Put it right there. I'm gonna lose that thing. So now, this should just slide out. And it does. There you go. Your 500, 500 megabyte hard drive right there in your hand. All right. So now, this does have the mounting on the side, so I'll have to flop this out like this. And this should just slide directly in here without using this outer casing. Because this should be exactly the same size which they are. See? All right, here we go. You should, it should, you should be able to feel it click. Okay, it doesn't click, but it's definitely in. The screw hole's lining up. I can't go in any more than that. So we're gonna now put the screw back in. Boom. All right, now with this, 
pretty sure you gotta take this front off. Yeah, take the slide the front of the data bank out. And now this should slide in pretty much exactly the same. And then you have this little adapter piece in the front right here with the prongs. This is what plugs in to the front of that little cartridge you put in that replaces your 2.5 hard drive. The connection between the two, it's, it's glorious. All right, let's see. All right, now we got that in. Now a little connection in the front. Maybe if I turn this around, you can see a little better. There you go. See, now you got this little connection right here in the front and it plugs right in to the... This would be the female and this right here would be the male, I guess. <laughs> All right. There we go, we are, we are connected. Supposedly. All right, now, here's the hard drive, right here. Let's open this little thing up. These are my poultry shears. I don't use it for food. Never understood that. All right, so now this, in theory, should just slide right in to the front of the data bank. Wow, I was expecting to go further than that, but I guess not. So we're sliding it in, feel the connection right there. Boom, that is in. It's, it's securely in. It's not very snug, I'll give you that. There's definitely some wiggle room in here and I'm not really sure how I feel about that. So, whatever, that's in. Now, supposedly all we do is slide the front piece back on the front. The front piece back on the front, we're getting all sorts of technical now. And there you go. We have upgraded the 2.5 to a 3.5, 500 megabyte to four terabytes. So, now all we gotta do is go plug this in. The back of the Nyko right here just plugs right back in to the back of your PlayStation where you normally would hook up the power cord to it. And then the power cord just goes directly into the back of this little adapter now. So, let's go over there, let's plug it in, and we'll see if formatting only this works. So, what I did mention in the beginning of the video, I don't have an external hard drive, I didn't set up, I didn't go out and spend $100 to you know, get an external hard drive. I just uploaded all my saved data to the cloud. I can re-download the games, I really don't care. It's not really gonna take very long, so. Here we go, let's go check this out. Let's see if it works. Okay, here we go. We have all our connections plugged in. I got my controller plugged in, and I have my USB drive already in. So, to reinitialize, you're supposed to hold the power button down for seven seconds. It'll beep once, and on the second beep, it should start. Focus, you bastard! I'm not plugging in my Elgato to do this because I don't want to have any other connections in that's gonna mess it up. So, here we go. We're going old school. We're filming the TV with a camcorder. All right, here we go. Seven seconds. Seven. Here we go. Beep twice. I can see myself in the TV. Connect the DualShock USB key to press the PS button. Okay, DualShock's connected. Okay, now, there you go. We're gonna go all the way down to initialize PS4. Reinstall system software. Number seven. There it is. Boom. Okay, I did that. USB's connected. Please wait. Fingers crossed, people. This please wait is making me nervous. All users and dads will be deleted. Do you want to continue? Yes, I want to continue. So far, so good. So far, so good. Initializing. It's going pretty quick. Ooh, look at it. Look at it. Cruising. Woo. Oh, no. Don't you, don't you get stuck in 99. Oh. 
All right, it's installing right now. Uh, I'm gonna stop recording, and then when it picks up towards the end or something awful happens, I'll start recording again. I'll be right back. 99, 100. Okay, here we go. It went, it went smoothly. It, pr it took probably a minute and a half, possibly two minutes. Now we're no signal. My TV is dirty. From this angle, it looks awful. All right, so we're gonna download a game. I have Ghost Simulator from my library, digital game, and we're gonna see if it downloads and if I can get my save data back from the cloud and see if it works. If it works, then this has been a success. But hold on, before we do that, let's do this. <laughs> There it is. There's the proof. 3.5 terabytes. There it is. So, yeah. In about six minutes, Goat Simulator will be done downloading and then we'll see if it all works. This is the part that people in their videos don't show you. They don't show you that it actually worked at the end. Yes, that is a giraffe with a pink bow. So we'll be back. <laughs> Oh, we got all our stuff. This is the stuff I got right here. So there we go, it works. See in the background, I was playing Ghost Simulator for a little while. Everything worked. I hope this helped you guys. If it did, subscribe for more stuff like this. I don't know when I'm gonna do more stuff like this because this costs about $200. That was including shipping and everything for the data bank and for the four terabyte hard drive, which I guess isn't too bad when now I can just download everything digitally. I don't have to go give GameStop any more money to buy games and I can just do everything now and not have to worry about anything. No more deleting games, no more none of that stuff like that. Another thing is I don't know if formatting the USB drive did anything. I don't know if it helped or not, but I did. So if you're having problems and you didn't format the hard drive and it's not working for you, try that. Try formatting the USB and maybe it'll work. Please let me know down in the comments if you tried this, if you like it. If it worked for you, if it didn't work for you, maybe we could try to come up with some sort of way to fix your problem. Thank you so much for watching the videos. How to make